Hello, and welcome to A Gross of Physics. Today is day 12, and what I'd like to do today is some more practice problems. The type of problem I'd like to look at today is hang time problems, an object that moves up into the air and then lands back on the ground, or an object that is thrown into the air and lands back in a person's hand. These types of problems will deal with motion that is um, both up and down, and the symmetry of the problem will allow us to look at the hang time as either the entire trip from the beginning to the end of the problem or it may be more prudent to divide the problem in half. In a situation where we will be neglecting air resistance it's important to realize that the time that the object is moving up will equal the time that the object is moving downward. And the reason that's the case is because the acceleration of gravity is constant during the entire motion of the object. So today's discussion um, will focus on problem solving, where an object is uh, moving through the air and back down uh, in the vertical direction. All right, for this next problem, we're going to solve for a person who's jumping into the air and then lands 0 0.9 seconds later. So they have a hang time of 0 0.9. Now, every time we deal with a hang time problem, we have a couple of options. Option one, just worry about the upward part. Option two, worry about the downward part. And option three, the entire trip. Now the reason each one of these can be useful for us is because we may need to find different things about the problem. For example, if you want to find your maximum height, that only occurs halfway through the problem. If we try to find the max height for the .9 seconds, we should get the fact that we're back on the ground. So the displacement should be zero. So depending upon the problem, we need to either look at the entire trip or half of the trip. And in this case, we want to find out how fast they leave the ground. Well, we could use this one because you can find your VI there. We could use this one as well to figure out the um, initial velocity leaving the ground. So we have option one, two, and three. And what I'm going to choose is option one. We'll break the problem into the upward part. So my givens, VI, whoop, well that's my unknown, so I'll just put a question mark. We're on the Earth's surface, negative 9.8 meters per second squared for the acceleration. And now this T is not going to be 0.9, but it's going to be 0 0.9 seconds divided by 2, which should get us 0.45. But let me verify. So T is 0 0.45 seconds. So this is the important part of the problem. We need to break the time in half. Now, the other part is that if we look at just the upward part of the motion, the final velocity for this part of the problem is actually going to be zero. So if we look at knowing A, T, and VF, and we're looking for VI, now I'm going to write find VI, but what I just showed you is an alternative way to write your find within the problem. Listed as a variable, put a question mark. That would replace writing the find and the VI in that case. Now, looking at these variables, I'm thinking equation three would be appropriate. VF equals VI plus AT. VF is zero. VI is what we're looking for. Negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And T would be 0 0.45 seconds. T is a scalar. So we don't have to worry about positives or negatives. Time's always going to be positive. 
Ooh, that's a plus. So what I have to do is bring the term over and then multiply point, 9.8 and 0.45. 9.8 times 0.45 is 4.41 meters per second. Now, since we had a negative sign here and we brought it over to the other side, it ends up being a positive, which means the person was jumping upward to begin with. So they had an upward speed of 4.41, or you could just say an initial velocity of 4.41 meters per second. The positive is assumed by default. Revisiting the hang time problem, what I'd like to do is actually calculate to see if we can get a displacement of zero like we um, should get. The problem we just did had a hang time of 0.9 seconds. And what we'll do is we'll use option three here and look at the entire trip. So we'll use the full time. We calculated VI to be 4.41 from the last problem. And we know the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We're trying to find D. And basically what we're doing is verifying that we get zero for our displacement. Now, looks like equation four is going to be the one we'll use. So D equals 4.41 meters per second times 0 0.9 seconds and we'll have plus one half negative 9.8 meters per second squared times 0 0.9 seconds squared. Notice I put the seconds outside parentheses to avoid thinking that that's a unit squared as, as opposed to the entire variable squared. Now basically we're gonna have two terms. We're gonna have the positive term and we're going to have the negative term. The positive term is based on the 4.41 and the 0.9. So this is your positive term. And then the 9.8, because it's negative, and when we square it, we're not squaring the 9.8, it stays negative. This will be our negative term. So as long as these two are equal, we should get our displacement of zero. Well, let me look at this first part. 4.41 times 0.9 is 3.969 meters. And then the second term, 0 0.5 times 9.8 times 0.9 squared gets me 3.969. So minus 3.969 meters. And if you notice, since they're equivalent, when you subtract them, displacement is zero meters. So we verified that the displacement should be zero. In this case, we used the full path of the object. We didn't have to choose half of the trip. All right, a ball is thrown upward at 17 meters per second and we want to find out how long it will take to land back on the ground. So the ball is going to go up in the air, it's going to come back down and hit the ground. Now this is one of the problems where we can decide which path we want to observe. Is it the upward part? Is it the downward part? Or is it the full trip? And what I'm going to do for this one is actually look at the entire trip. I'm going to use equation or the third option. And the reason I want to do that is to talk about what is your initial and final velocities if the object travels upward then back down in the same uh, gravitational attraction. And what you're going to find is that the speed on the way up is going to be equal to the speed right before it hits the ground. So the 17 meters per second is going to be 17 meters per second at the end of the journey. Now, as we know, the difference is going to be in terms of its vector direction. So when we write our givens list, because of the symmetry of the problem, VI is going to be positive 17 meters per second, VF negative 
17 meters per second. A classic blunder that most students make is calling VF zero when something hits the ground. Remember, we're looking at the problem right before it hits the ground. As soon as it hits the ground, the acceleration changes. We no longer have uniform acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared because the ground is affecting the ball as well and we can't use the values after the acceleration changes. These only work during the uniform acceleration. Now if I look at VF, VI, and A, let's see, I should be able to find how long will it be in the air. Find T. I'm going to use equation 3. VF equals VI plus AT negative 17 meters per second equals 17 meters per second plus negative 9.8 meters per second squared times t. Now the reason the signs matter is because if I had them both positive I'd subtract and get zero and the time would end up being zero. Now the reality is when I subtract my 17 I should get negative 34. and then equals minus 9.8 times t. Now the meters per second squared and the meters per second are not necessary after we substitute once into our equation. We divide by both sides by negative 9.8 and since we already have the units let's keep them for one more line. You'll notice that the meters will cancel. One of the seconds will cancel and we're left with a second. But since it's meters per second, the second's on the bottom, which ends up coming back onto the top. So our dimensional analysis shows that the unit becomes seconds. Now the answer is 34 divided by 9.8, and we get 3.5, or 3.47, I guess we can go with, seconds. So the time that that ball would be in the air is 3.47 seconds. Now if we had maybe used the first or second option of the problem, the time to get to the top, or the time from the top to the ground, what we would have to do is take that time and double the answer. In this case, if I wanted to know what would happen on the way up, I would have to take t and divide it by 2. So just be careful which amount of time you need, the entire trip or half of the time. And because of the uniform acceleration and the fact that we're ignoring wind resistance, everything is symmetric. On the way up equals the same as the way down. The initial velocity going up is also in, equal to the final velocity on the way down, the difference being the signs.